we moved on to the, the second stage where we went and built a demo. And so here what we're looking to do is test solution, test early adopters, and test revenue streams. And with the solution, what we're really looking to do is kind of hone in on what is that minimum feature set we need to build. With the, um, with the market risk, what we're really looking to do is will customers bear that price? So we knew $49 was higher, and if you're, paying, if you're using email, that's $0. So we had to see if they would really agree to pay that price. At this point, we hadn't mentioned that pricing to them. We were just there collecting information. And then finally, with the early adopters, we wanted to see, can we really even go narrow? Like we had a definition of parents with young kids. We thought that was good. But can we go even narrower than that? Because we were beginning to see some early signs that we could, we could actually even further subdefine who they were. Um, so we went and did these solution interviews. Um, again, created the, the falsifiable hypotheses. We wanted to test the feature set, test the early adopter statement, and test the $49 a year price point. So we went and ran these interviews um, using this script, which, very, which looks very similar to the problem interview in the, in the beginning stage. But instead of asking them how they solve the problem, that's where we go into demo mode. We actually show them what the solution looks like. And after we show them the solution, we ask for feedback on you know, what features, um, like if the solution was compelling enough to solve the problem. And we try to remove features or add features based on their feedback. So it's, it's part usability test, but that's, that's kind of the purpose of the demo help them visualize the, the solution we're going to build. Then we, we test pricing. So right after that, we say we're going to charge $49 a year. Would that be something you guys would be willing to sign up for? And that's where you can raise the bar and you can make them sign up on the spot. Um, or you can just take that verbal commitment and, and, um, and, and revisit with them later. So here's what we learned in this case, is when we looked at that minimum feature set, we did find that the, the, that the, um, that the, the demo was compelling. So what we did over here is we built a short video that showed a scenario where we had a folder with, a, I think, 500 pictures at the time. And that was a video we also put on the website. And then we also created another, and we created another folder with a few videos in it. And we just walked through the process where, in less than a minute, we were able to share all the stuff. And the receiving end was there kind of using, using the content. And we showed that to people that many of them were just kind of blown away by the fact that it could be done that quickly. And so they were willing to give it a try. So even those that, that, even those that actually I'll talk about pricing a little bit early on. I would say here, from a feature perspective, um, what, what we saw is that people were asking for you know, more third party integration. Not everyone was using uh, iPhoto, for example. And that's an example where those are things you can always revisit. You don't have to like, support everything out of the gate. You don't have to support all the features. Um, there are always things you can revisit. We felt like the folder sharing was really the lowest common denominator. And many of them were sufficient with just that uh, as a place to start, but would like to see tighter integration down the road, which we promised you know, we'll add on our roadmap at some point. Uh, and that's how that conversation went. Um, on the pricing point, on the price point, what we found is that there was definitely some resistance from people who were on email because they were not used to paying for anything. But at the same point, they were kind of blown away by the speed of sharing and the ability that you could share 500 pictures in, in a few seconds versus the one or two emails they're sending out or the, or the uh, one or two photos they're sending out per email. So they were still willing to give it a try. The folks that, w and they were not as price sensitive, at least to the audience we went to, they were more, more kind of value sensitive. Would this really provide provide the value they were looking for. Now, on the people that were paying, there was really no resistance on price because they were already paying something in that ballpark. Their bigger concern was, would we be able to migrate all their data, which was something that we had thought about but we weren't planning on doing. So that, that kind of created some more work that we would have to build in if we were going to kind of go after those, those users first. Um, this was where we had the most interesting kind of discovery is we, we had this segment of, of parents with young kids and what we actually end up refining our early adopter to be was first time moms with kids under the age of three. And we had some theories on why that actually worked. And what we, the moms, that one was clear because the more people we talked to, we'd, we'd, we'd start with dads and moms depending on how we got introduced. But usually, usually the dad would say, well, I don't do any of the sharing, talk to the mom. So they would, we would automatically be in situations where we were talking generally to the mom who was doing most of the sharing. So we knew this was a mom oriented product, which is why the landing page had a picture of the mom in that iteration. The second thing is that we found is that as we were talking to them, we were getting this demographic information. And the first time moms had this twinkle in their eye, they were just super excited that they had a baby and wanted to share it with the world. But once you have your second or third child, I'm sorry if there's second or third child out there, it's just not the same, um, both, for the, both for the moms and also even for the grandparents, because you've seen enough of these baby pictures. And, and it's not, it's not, it doesn't have that same kind of magical thing for them. 
So we found that the, that the demand out there was much higher with first-time moms. Similarly with the ages of the kids, is that the first three years there was a lot of sharing, a lot of excitement. But once the ages of the kids went up like four, five, six years, they were still like lots of sports activities people wanted to share. But it was not, I don't know if the kids become less cute or it's just, again, there's that, there's that photo fatigue where people have just seen so many and they're tired of it. So this was like the critical kind of uh, realization of who the early adopter would be for this product. And the good news is these, these people are very easy to spot. Like usually if you find a mom, you can, she'll have a baby with her. And even at coffee shops, there were places where we, we, we set up just impromptu interviews and got people to look at what we were doing. And they were very easy, easy early adopters to spot for that reason. Um, so talking about problem solution fit, uh, I'll talk about when you are done with it. And then we can, we can kind of end, end over here and, and take a few questions after that. So I'll say that you're you are done when you can really identify who that early adopter is, what the demographics are. And so like getting down to that kind of a clear definition. And again, that may not be the end goal. That's not all the customers we want to address. But those are the people that maximize our chances for giving them the product and having them be motivated to use it. So I, being able to identify who they are, being able to have a must-have problem you can put in front of them that they are able to kind of get excited about, they're able to recognize, able to want to, to, to find a solution for being able to define a minimum viable product, and then having a price associated with that that the customer agrees to pay with. And again, even if it's a verbal commitment, it's not a guarantee that they will pay it, but at least it's better than having no price associated with it, because you have no idea whether you can charge for what you're, you're offering or not. And then finally, based on that pricing that you, you put out there, there has to be a back of the envelope calculation where this still represents a big enough problem for you to solve and something that you can, that you can go build.